everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Just who you wanted to see, the star of the show. Daddy Milestones and his 730 John Deere tractor. He is out there with an awesome John Deere disc. And it's either a 12 or a 14 footer. And he is out there knocking down, cultivating, Okay, he's disking, he's not cultivating, but disking cultivates the soil. So this is what he is doing and why. See all this green and all this grass? We were letting it go because we had contemplated turning this into a pasture for the cows. Um, the steers and the cows are all right over there. And we wanted to be able to have another pasture over here. We were concerned about this guide wire and the pole. The pole, not so much a problem, but the guide wire, we were gonna have to put three posts, four posts around there, so the cows. So the utility guy comes to the door about two months ago and notifies us that they're gonna want to change that pole out for rot. They're gonna be putting in some kind of internet service and they're updating the pole. The second concern we have this roadside right here. And right here is where a little pickup truck went off the road. Right over there is where that car went off the road. And just, and just over there is another road. So we're right at a corner, we're at an intersection. People go off the road terribly. The county mismanages the ditches and they mismanage the pitch of the road. So cars are constantly falling off. I don't want to put up fence just to have it damaged. I don't want to have a bull get out and not have any way to safely get him back. And to have the cows up here, I don't want a pregnant cow or her calf getting out in the road or getting hit by a car. So all this green is grass and rye and a little bit of weeds. So I went out here by the pole about a week and a half ago and I cut down all the burdock, any thistle I could find. This field was heavy with burdock last year. This is the field that was a sunflower field twice. Not last year, but the year before that, I think. Um, and it's just beautiful. If you haven't seen our sunflower videos, go back and look. So I was going through our videos for my own information to see how fast they grew and at what, at what point. And we had planted them about mid-July. Because we weren't getting any rain, there was no point in putting seeds in the ground into dust. We finally got some rain and all this grew and grew and grew. We were working on our pig fence right here and this is now another like a half a foot to 12 inches taller than it was since we've got that rain last Sunday. So in six days, we got more rain this week. So it's great, great dirt now. It's moist, it's not muddy. Some of the farmers around here that had planted wheat were going out the day after it rained and spreading lime and they were just compacting that soil. So he's gonna plant sunflowers again, everybody. I'm so excited. I, I have a beehive that I'm going to be moving here and you have to move bees at night. Make sure that all the bees are back to the hive, close it off and move it over. And I'm thinking I want to do a divide on that beehive before I move it. So the bees are gonna have plenty of pollen and we have so much pollen around here anyway from our crops. From the hay they gather pollen from the neighboring farms they gather them from the ditches from the butterfly plants and the milkweed so he's knocking all of this down and we're going to be getting that corn planter ready so that's one of the next videos i will show you we have an old john deere four row corn planter this particular field was so thick full of weeds and mare's tail in those past videos. I don't remember what all of it 
is called the different weeds. But the thistle has been knocked down. For the most part, we went through here last year and we caught them before they went to seed heads. This year, there's this new weed that I've never seen in the field before. They get little orange, um, like, cups of flower on them. And I, I'll have to look it up to see what it is, see if I can find it. But right over there, we have never had them. Um, more than one or two. It's super thick over there. And that area used to have burdocks like crazy. So I'm going to go over there and go see what's going on with that. So this is a low area in the field. And I wanted to come out here closer to kind of see what was going on with these weeds here. And they have like a pumpkin type leaf on them. But in this low area here, look at this thistle. We have got thistles here. Those seeds just spread and spread and spread. Having a late season planting, you know we're organic, we don't spray. Just because it's acceptable throughout the industry does not mean it's safe. So we're gonna just stay away from it. We're keeping our no debt farm going on these old tractors and old equipment and everything works just fine. All that heavy rain flooding we had this spring, all of this got washed out and it kind of carried that soil over here and that's why there's so much thistle right in this area and I think that's what is going on with these tall weeds here you see there's not a whole lot of grass here it kind of got washed out and it washed down right on into the cow pen I was actually over there today looking and there is an absolute dividing line where the electric line is going between the cows and the bulls because there's a higher population of bulls and steers than there is cows. So their grass is growing where the bulls are trampling it and eating it. So this grass is 18 to 24 inches tall, some of it taller. It's all organic matter. It's all going back into the ground. And then it's fertilizer. It is green manure or green fertilizer. We also spread we also bring the manure spreader out here and we layer on the manure from the barn, which is hay and straw and poop, um, bedding, anything spent from the barn gets brought out here. So we're not doing any of that. Uh, like I said, just because it's the industry standard doesn't mean we're going to do it. Kind of going back to... Um, the old-fashioned way of doing things we want to get that organic certification eventually we are uh, clean for five years six years maybe I'm starting to lose track it could be okay so we've been clean for six years and we just keep doing more things and the neighbors just keep shaking their heads at us going what are they doing and they are planting their wheat they're planting their oats um, the year that we had planted oats, we were keeping them for ourselves, but we had excess. So we called the elevator, and it was like $4 a bushel. If you were to go to the store, I don't know how much a bushel weighs of oats. I'll have to look it up. A 40 or 50 pound bag of oats at the store cost $15. And at the time, I hadn't had any grain here for our chickens when we first started and I was buying those bags for $14 to make our own chicken feed until I got to know the neighboring neighbors and I was just buying it direct from them or buying it from the elevator. If you need to buy grain that's the best way to do it because the packaging, the markup, the shipping, everything. Get, get your feed and grain direct from the farmer if you can. They don't always have a sign up for sale saying that they're doing it. You can mix it yourself and everything, but they'll figure out a way, you know, take, take them an empty feed bag and most of them will scoop you out 50 pounds full of food.
when the weekend comes and he's home so much gets done he was moving around trailers full of hay that had been sitting in the front yard for two weeks we're using those semi storage trailers to store the hay instead of putting it up in parts of the barn that we're trying to do repairs on and he just gets home and he gets to work and I feel bad but I'm like go 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 so today I was getting grain together to um, do feed grinding and he's like okay we have to do this we'll probably do it tomorrow morning because the sun is going down and he'll probably be wrapping up the field right about sundown fortunately I made an early dinner um, so yeah, easy taco dinner tonight. Taco dinner with homemade seasoning is delicious. If you haven't seen the video with our homemade taco seasoning, take a minute and watch it. Um, it's totally reduced sodium. You can even leave the salt out of it completely and it doesn't affect the flavor it because you're using all these great herbs that are low in sodium or no sodium at all. So anyways, this is our field and I'll be showing you that corn planter. So watch for that video update next. Remember to hit that like button and we'll see you next time.